So, um, thank you so much. I'm very honored to be here. I had no, no idea. <laughs> and I don't think I've made a speech for anyone since I was in high school. So, it's a, a bit of a stretch for me to get here today. But uh, I'd like to keep my remarks fairly short and share a little piece of music with you at the end of my comments today. And um, as, as I assume I'm supposed to do, I'm supposed to offer up these tidbits of wisdom for all you graduates here today. Things that I think you should keep in mind as you progress out into the world and make your way. And so I've come up with a couple of those. I try not to, you know, rip off Dr. Seuss or anything like that. So I've made up a few of my own today. And, um, and I have a little, just a little bit of a story behind each of those comments that I'd like to make for you. Um, my first thing that I put down was, life may seem like a series of accidents, but it's likely not. And my subtitle for that is Music is Magic. Uh, well, just last evening I was watching a PBS news broadcast on a new program where small three-minute intervals of classical music were being introduced into classrooms throughout the entire school. Uh, along with a mindfulness meditation or some other kind of exercise. And surprisingly, students seemed to respond quite positively to the chance to reflect for a moment before going to a very stressful day. Sounds kind of familiar, doesn't it? <laughs> and uh, yeah, I've tried to model that a little in my own classes. Um, I was happy to, happy to learn from Ann Herzog that um, after piloting a program to get troubled students into music in the public schools, the Community Music School of Springfield uh, gathered enough concrete, positive data about students' improved performance through music to warrant consideration of an expansion of the program citywide. So we can expect some new music teachers in our midst in the times ahead, which is a, a real good thing, obviously, I think. Um, it's probably worth mentioning as well, uh, just this week, uh, CNN aired a new segment on the Young at Heart Chorus, this is a group that I belong with and work with for um, more than 20 years now. They've become internationally renowned as a group of senior citizens who sing rock and roll. Uh, and we have been able and fortunate to travel the world together and put on the performances that are really equal parts irreverent and funny, but also very endearing. And some of you may have seen the movie about the group called Young at Heart, but if you have not, I highly recommend it. It's something you can probably find on Netflix or Amazon or some other place where movies are streamed and rented. Um, I really encourage you to see that. It's really, uh, it's, it's a moving film. So um, anyway, getting back, uh, CNN aired a new segment about the group on um, this, during this week of several times now. Uh, and the, the host there, John Berman, the morning show host, um, he was asked by CNN as part of a new program they have, uh, what group would you like to revisit 10 years after you know, you've been with us as a commentator? And it, without a doubt, he said, let me go work with the Young and Heart once again. So we went in and did a concert in a prison, because uh, part of our mission is to try to help people in prisons um, maybe have a fresh look at the way the world is through music and the opportunity to be musical with other people. And so uh, just this week, we got a chance to see that go on the air, and maybe, hopefully, it will bring us some more European tours <laughs> in the future. So, um, so even though, you know, it feels like kind of an accident sometimes, things that happen, um, it's not really always that way. There's sometimes some things being connected inside of there that you're not really so sure about. And those are the interesting pieces for me. Um, my story about that is uh, my first time getting an accordion. And I know a gentleman is someone who plays accordion but doesn't mention it or do it in public. But I actually do. And so I admit it, although you'll be happy to know I didn't bring one today. So you won't have to listen to me play it. And I could tell you a bunch of accordion jokes as well, but I'll skip those. I hear them plenty anyway. So I was always being dragged off to Brimfield, which is the biggest flea market here on the East Coast. And my first wife, um, Anne, was always interested in going to Brimfield to buy collectibles. She had bought these little tchotchkes 
and put them into these printer's drawers and made these illustrious gifts for all my relatives and aunts and uncles and things. I was kind of like the walking cash machine for the, uh, for the day's activities. I just walked around and here's another five, go get some more tchotchkes, you know. Uh, until one day I realized I'm putting some money in my pocket and I'm going to go get something for myself this time. And what did I find? I found this man with a pickup truck with a bunch of accordions on the back. And I said to him, where are you from? What? He says, I'm from Texas. I'm going, Texas? Why, why are you? He says, you haven't been down to Texas, have you? They have a lot of accordions down there. And then I realized, yeah, it's kind of like Tex-Mex music and stuff like that. And there's a lot of German people. Of course, it makes sense after you think about it. But so I was just, I was kind of amazed at looking at these instruments and I thought, okay, well, this is it. I'm going to buy one of these things. And I brought it home and much to my family's horror, I started sitting there in the living room, squeezing away on there, you know, on top of old Smokey and all that good stuff. And I taught myself how to play this instrument as a grown adult and, and suffered the slings and arrows of bad accordion jokes every time I took it out of a case. And <clears throat> the funny thing about it is, a couple summers later, I was asked by this group, Young at Heart, to come and be their piano player, which I said, great, I'd love to do that. And then uh, at the end of the summer, the regular piano player came back. And the director of the group, he said, well, it's too bad you're leaving now, Chris, because we're going to go to Europe and perform at a festival in Rotterdam. He said, I said, well, what do you mean? You're not going to, you're not going to let me go with you? And they said, well, we, we already have the piano player. He's back. And what would you do? Play accordion. Of course. So I got the gig. I brought the accordion. And from that point forward, I've been in the band and able to go all over the world to just the most amazing places and perform this very life-giving theatrical performance for people from all different countries. And we've been as far as Japan and Australia and New Zealand and all over Europe. It's been a quite an amazing experience. So what you think of as maybe being an accident sometimes will turn in one of the most profound things that may ever happen to you. That's kind of what I wanted to get across that way. So one thing that's important to me as a teacher, and those of you who have taken my class know uh, assumptions we make are often incorrect and should and need to be challenged. So by way of that, I'll relay to you that my assumption when I first started working here was that I wouldn't really have much to teach a bunch of people who are not music musicians or music majors. And I scratched my head around that for a little while. And likewise, my predecessor who, who had the full-time position as the director of music, he came over to me and said, eh, you're never going to get a full-time job here, pal, so you might as well just pack it up and go somewhere else, you know, which I thought was kind of like, oh, that's kind of mean. So, but the assumptions on both of our part were incorrect because about three years later, this man, unfortunately, really wasn't doing very well with a program that I was about to inherit. And so his assumption that I wouldn't last here was incorrect, of course, because here I am, <laughs> 26, 27 years later, right? And, um, and the other important piece of it is that I learned uh, specifically about social justice, that music and social justice was a real treasure trove of things that I could teach people who were not musicians that helped them understand social issues in their lives and how music really impacts them in that way. So, um, of course, you have to insert a few quotes in any one of these talks, right? So I luckily am drawing from great musicians that I've taught in my class, social protest. And one of them is, all we are saying is give peace a chance. And you probably all know who that is, John Lennon. And one love, one love, let's get together and feel all right.